All right, we're going to take a look at factoring trinomials. Now, I've got some uh, general rules over here on the left side, and I've got three that we're going to look at initially, and then we'll take a look at some variations as far as what they'll be. But a trinomial, three terms. Our process that we're going to look at is our sign pattern, split the first term, split the last term, and then we'll check and correct if need be. So, that being said, most important piece is going to be this sign pattern. Okay? If my last term's negative, I'm going to have one or each, one of each. I don't know if the plus or the minus comes first. I just have a habit of writing the plus first. Okay? If the last term is positive, well, they're going to be the same. And what I'm going to do then is and look at the middle. I want to make sure when I'm going through and factoring that I'm getting the sign pattern correct. If I can get that sign pattern correct, that's going to help me with the rest of the factoring. So I've got three examples up here that would deal with the three different sign patterns. So on this first one, I'm not worried about the one, the five, and the six. I'm worried about this last sign. Second one, I'm not worried about the one, the nine, or the 20. I'm worried about this last sign, that positive and the same on this guy. I'm not worried about the 1, the 2, or the 40. I'm worried about that sign. That's going to help me with the sign pattern. All right? So on this guy here, that last term is positive. So since that last term is positive, that means both of the signs, when I factor these tri this trinomial, are going to be the same. They're either going to be two positives or two negatives. The way that I can tell... That's negative, so I know it's minus, minus. Okay. I know that for a fact. Okay. I look at the second one. Now, we'll finish it out, but I'm just looking at the signs right now. I look at the second one. That sign's positive. So that means, once again, they're the same. They're either both positive or both negative. I look at that middle. That's a plus, so I know they're both positive. Third one, that 48. This guy's negative. So once I know that that's negative, then I know I have one of each, a plus and a minus. Now, I don't really know which one comes first, but I know there's one of each. I just have a habit of always putting the plus first, but sometimes the minus will be first, and we'll take a look at that. But right now, I'm just trying to get that sign pattern down. Now, what's really happening here, or where that sign pattern's coming from? Let's look back if... You were going to multiply two binomials out. Let's kind of make something like this. All right. So this would be x squared minus 3x plus 8x minus 24. So this last number is coming from these two right here being multiplied. So if that last number is negative, then these two had to have opposite signs or it wouldn't produce a negative. It wouldn't matter. If it had a minus here and a plus there, that last number is creating that. Right? So that last number is creating that piece. Now that last number, if both of these were positive, then you get a positive 24. If both of these were negative, you get a positive 24. So that's what I mean by if this is a positive at the end, that means these two signs had to be the same. That middle number is going to tell us which one. If they're opposite signs, one positive, one negative, that's what's going to create that negative there. There's where I'm kind of developing that sign pattern, looking at that last value, okay, whether it's positive or negative. So get that down. Now, uh, split the first term. So I'm looking at the first term, x squared. Well, that would have to be x and x, because x times x, x squared. x, x x, x. Again, x times x, x squared. That's where that's coming from. So splitting the first term should be the quickest part. Now I'm going to split the last term, check and correct. So let's look at this last term. I'm thinking of factors. I've got to think of values that multiply to give me 6. Well, that would be a 1 and a 6 or a 2 and a 3. And this is where I've just got to try some things, you know. Hey, I'm going to guess 2 and 3. 
It's either two and three or one and six. I'm trying something here. I check. There's my outside, negative 3x. There's my inside, negative 2x. Hey, negative 3 and negative 2, that's negative 5. I'm good. I've got this thing factored. 20. I have choices of 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Okay. Well, let's say I go with 2 and 10. Well, if I check the outside, I get 10 inside of 2. Hey, 10 and 2 is 12. That's not 9. So my choice was wrong. Now I'll go to 4 and 5. Hey, 5x, 4x, that's going to give me that 9x. The point is, you know, when you look at this, we've got to try some values. We're going to be wrong some of the time. So when I go through and get that value, I know it's going to be a 9 there for that piece. The 48 on the last one. Uh, two numbers that give me 48, 6, and 8. Okay. Well, I'll go an 8 here and a 6 here. So negative 6, negative 8, or excuse me, positive 8. Negative 6, positive 8, positive 2. Hey, I've got what I want. I've got that positive 2 looks good okay how did i know that eight went in the first slot i don't i'm just trying something i'm trying to figure out where to put it if i'm willing to try then i'm also willing to be incorrect sometimes and then when i'm going through i can make the changes necessary so for example let's say so my answer would be x plus eight x minus six let's say hey factors are six and eight and i put the six first well, let me check this. Negative 8, positive 6. Well, negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Well, wait, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a positive 2. Well, if I get the exact opposite of what I want, I'm also pretty happy. I wanted a 2. This gives me a negative 2. What that's going to tell me is just flip the signs. I knew there was one positive and one negative. I just didn't know which one went where. Now look, I get that positive 2 in the middle there, which is back to what I had the first time, x plus 8 and uh, x minus 6. I get both pieces there. So that's my basis of what I'm working with. Sign pattern, front, back, check. I can make corrections if I need to. Now. Let's look at a few others here. One of the things that likes to get us sometimes is when we look at problems and off, not two, that would be number four here. Uh, we look at problems and they start looking worse for lack of a better word, okay? Let's go 7x squared minus 46x minus 21. Okay. And we will look at, oh, well, let's go with, 2x squared plus 7x minus 49. A couple of others there, kind of taking a look at what we've got. Now, what's changed here? Hey, yeah, numbers got bigger. Right. Now that coefficient's not a 1. So what was nice when the coefficient was 1? x, 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 x. Well, wait a minute. 1 times 1 is not 7, so I'm going to have to make some changes there. That's going to make my process uh, seem more difficult, but it's not. It's going to be the same process. I might be a little bit slower at working out the answer, but it will be that same process. So let's look at this. Sign pattern first. That's negative. Hey, we got one positive, one negative. Always that sign pattern. I look at the front. I'm going to split that front. 7 is 7 times 1. So 7x, x. Huh? A lot of times I get asked, well, why would you put the 7 in the first one and the 1 in the second one? Why didn't you put the 1 here and the 7 here? Because I felt like putting it there. It's simple as that. I'm trying something. I don't know if it goes here or here, but I know it goes in one of them. So I'm going to put it in and try. I go to the back, 21. Two numbers that will give me 21. 
uh, would be 3 and 7. All right, let's take a look here. 3, 7. Negative 49, positive 3. Hey, that's negative 46. That's what I wanted. Again, I wasn't looking ahead going, well, the 7's got to go here, the 3's got to go here, things like that. I'm just trying to slot them in. Some things that will help you. Okay. Now, that's the correct answer. I'm just going to kind of go back here. Let's look at 3 and 7. I'm still going to use that 3 and 7, but here's part of my uh, process, my thought process. I look at this. There is no common factor here. There's not a number that will go in the 7, 46, and 21. There's not a common factor. Okay. Well, if I want to use 7 and 3, that's my thought that I want to try using first. Okay. I will, but the 7 cannot go here. If the 7 goes here, that's going to make a common factor. If I didn't have a common factor in the beginning, I'm certainly not going to have one in the factor part. So if it's going to work with a 7 and a 3, the 7 has to go there. Let's look at number 5 here. Still sign pattern. Plus, minus. At that last term there. Still plus, minus. Split my front. 2x, x, 49. Well, my first thought on 49 would be 7 and 7. Let's see if it works. 7, 7. Let's see, that would be negative 14, positive 7. Okay, negative 14, positive 7. Well, wait a minute, that gives me a negative 7. I wanted a positive 7. So again, if I get the exact opposite of what I wanted, which I did here, I want a 7. I've got negative 7 when it multiplies out. Switch my signs. And then that would give me a positive 14 and a negative 7. All right, let's go with 2x squared minus 21x plus 10. Trying to get some different looks here. More looks we get, the better it will be. But notice we're still going to follow the same process. Sign pattern. Then I look at that. It's got to be negative, negative. That last term's positive. That means they're the same. I look at the middle. I got to have negative, negative. I split the front. 2x, x. Again. Why did I put the 2x in the first one and not the second one? I felt like it. That's really all I'm looking at there. Everybody likes to think, well, you knew ahead. No, I'm just trying something. Okay, I know it goes in one of them. Let me just slot it in there and see what happens. 10. 2 and 10 or 1 and 5. Okay. Uh, excuse me, not 2 and 10. <laughs> 1 and 10, 2 and 5. If I can say that right. 1 and 10 or 2 and 5. Well, let's go... Let's try the 2 and 5. 2 and 5. So I'm going to use that idea, that common factor I talked about. I'm thinking of 2 and 5. 2 cannot go here. Because if 2 went right here, I'd have a common factor. So if 2 and 5 is going to work, 5 has to go here and 2 there. Now let's check it out. Negative 4, negative 5. That's negative 9. Not what I wanted. So if 2 and 5 is not going to work, must be 1 and 10. Right. Let's take a look here, 1 and 10. So that idea I was speaking about, the uh, common factor. If I'm going to use 1 and 10, right, 10 cannot go there because that would create a common factor right here. So 10 cannot go there. That means 10 would have to go here if it's going to work. Okay. So now I've got... Let's see, this will be negative 20, negative 1. Hey, that's negative 21. That's what I wanted. Right? I've got that piece factored out. Right? Now, yeah, I do think if a 1's in front here, that coefficient 1, that does make it a little bit easier, okay? Because I don't have as much to think about on the multiplying and everything versus if it's something that's not a 1. Right? But notice my process didn't change. 
I went sign pattern. I split the front. I split the back. I checked. Sometimes I was right. Other times I could make that correction and kind of figure out what I need to do. Let's look at, still working with the same thing. It's kind of getting a few different looks here. Let's go with, let's see, six, this would be number seven. All right, let's go with nine X squared minus 37 X minus 40. Let's look at this guy here. Nothing in common. Okay. I know this is going to slow me down a little bit. Numbers a little bit bigger. That's okay. I'm going to stick to my process. Plus, minus. That last term's negative. I'm going to the front. Well, the front is a 9. So it's either going to be a 3 and 3, 3x and 3x, or 9 and 1, 9x and x. At this moment, I don't know, but I've got to be willing to try something. I'm going to try the 3s. 3x, three 3x. Three Again, why am I trying the 3s? I felt like it. I know it's 3 and 3 or 9 and 1. i got to try something. 40, 5 and 8. All right, 5 and 8, let's take a look here. If I go 5 here, 8 here. That would be negative 24, positive 15. That's not going to be negative 37. Okay, switching these isn't going to change much because there's still just threes in the front. Five and eight, not going to be working with that guy. How about four and 10? Four, 10. Negative 30, positive 12. Well, that's not going to give me negative 37. 2 and 20. All right, 2 and 20. We're going to get 20 times 360, getting a little bit further away. This might be one of those cases we're going, all right, 3 and 3 didn't work. So I'm going to go 9 and 1. Now, what I want to make sure that we're understanding here is 3 and 3 was not a wrong choice because three and three were factors of nine. It didn't work, but it was still a legitimate choice to try. Couldn't get three and three to work. I'm gonna now go to nine and one. All right, so nine and one, I'm gonna go back to that five and eight. All right, let's go eight, five, here we go. Negative 45, positive eight, that's negative 37. I've got this thing factored. The more practice we have at this, the better it's going to get. Things are going to come a lot faster. We'll see things faster. But in the meantime, here in the beginning, I've just got to be willing to try something. I know how to multiply. So I'm trusting my multiplication skills in addition to figure out if it worked or not. Okay? In the meantime, I'm just trying to try something to see what I can do. Yes, it's more difficult when that number in front becomes a nine because now there's two choices. You know, it was definitely better when it was a one. If it was, say, a seven, well, there's only one choice, one and seven. Now that it's a nine, it produces a couple of different choices there. We can sometimes kind of make it a little bit more difficult. Okay? But notice I'm sticking to the same process. Okay? Let's look at something like this. Uh, let's go... 8x squared plus 30x plus 27. Okay. Again, just trying to get some different looks, working with the three different sign patterns. Here I would have a plus plus, plus, plus. I split the front. I'm looking at 8 and 1 or 4 and 2. I'm going to go four and two. Remember, I've just got to start somewhere. 27, nine and three, or one and 27. Uh, one and 27 seems kind of large with a 27 in there, trying to get to a 30. So I'm going to go with the nine and three. Nine, three. There's a 12. 
There's an 18, that's 30. I've got this thing factored, right? So sometimes I get it the first try, other times I don't. What I wanna make sure of is I'm not quitting on the problem. This is really working our number sense and kind of dealing with these values. I don't wanna quit just because the values I put in didn't work, okay? We've gotta be willing to try some different things. It does get a little bit easier and a lot quicker the more we do. I will tell you, and I'll set it already, if this is my front number, just an x squared, well, that makes things a little easier for me. If it's a 5x squared, well, I think the 1's easier than the 5, but this isn't too bad because there's only one choice, 1 and 5. If it's a 10x squared, now I've got a couple of choices, 2 and 5 or 1 and 10. I can expect that to maybe take me just a little bit longer, which again is perfectly fine. Sometimes that's what happens to us. The other thing we run into with these trinomials is sometimes we will have a common factor. So let's get something like this. 3x cubed plus 12x squared minus 36x. We always want to look for common factors first. So when I look at a problem like that, 3x cubed plus 12x squared minus 36x, I know there is a 3x in common what I want to do is go ahead and just get that out of there. Okay. So if I have a 3x in common, see that'll leave me x squared. That'll leave me 4x in the middle. And that'll leave me minus 12 on the back end. I'm going to take out that 3x. Now I see that trinomial. I'm factoring my trinomial. 3x. Just kind of leave that guy sitting down in front. My sign pack plus, minus. I'm looking right at that 12 for my sign pattern. Split the front. Notice I have not changed the process. Split the back. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. I'll go 2, 6. Check. Negative 6, positive 2. Negative 6 and positive 2 all right, that's negative 4, not quite what I wanted. I wanted a positive 4, switch the signs. There's our process that we're working with. I've got a common factor there, did not affect the process I was working with. Let's look at another one here with a common factor. Let's go negative 36x squared plus 21x minus 3. I see a common factor of three. Three goes into 36, 21, and three. But I don't ever want to leave with a negative. So if I see a negative up front, not only am I going to take out the three, I'm going to actually take out the negative two, or negative also, I should say. Right. That would leave me 12x squared minus 7x plus 1. I take out that negative 3. The reason I want to start with a positive right here is because that is what this sign pattern is based on, that front number being positive. Now let's me look at the back. When I look at this last term, that positive, that's going to give me my sign pattern. The positive 1 means they're the same. I look at the middle, that negative 7, so they're both negative. Split the front, I'm going to split the 12, and then I'm going to split the back and check. This would be one of those cases where I would actually do the back first. Most of the time, we do split the front first. But I wanted to kind of get this one up here. The reason I would split the back first here, there's only one choice. One times one's one. There's not any other choices there. 12, I've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. I might as well just go ahead and slot in the back and get it out of my way. It's not really saving me any work, but it just kind of gets that piece out of the way for me. Now that 12, I'll go 3x, 4x. I check, negative 3, negative 4. Hey, that's negative 7. That's what I wanted. That's what I was looking for. So if I see a common factor, I want to get that guy out of there. Okay. 
a lot of times we don't have common factors. Okay. If I don't have a common factor, that's fine. I'll start my process going through my sign pattern and on forward to the end. If I do have a common factor, even if it's a negative, I'm going to get that out of there. Once that's factored out, here's my trinomials I'm working with and back to that sign pattern. I need to understand that if this front number has multiple choices for factors to use, it might slow me down a little bit. It's not going to change my process. I'm still going to focus on, after that common factor, sign pattern. Then I'm going to split this first term. Then I'm going to split the last. And then this guy becomes really important. I'm going to check. Notice each one of these, I checked those outside and inside terms to make sure I was getting the middle. There was quite a few of them that I had to make corrections on. It didn't give me the right value to start with. That's okay. If I get it laid out, I can make those corrections. One of the worst things we could ever do when it comes to factoring these trinomials is just to sit back and stare at it. Staring at it's not going to do anything. If we can get some numbers in there to work with, we can make the appropriate changes to get it factored correctly, which means the more that we're doing, the easier or more familiar, I should say, it's going to get because you start working with the same numbers a lot. You start seeing things a little bit faster. It's just the process becomes faster, but it does not change the process. So we've got to get some numbers in there to try to help our number sets.